requesting permission to record. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Yeah, wherever you are, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 427. Uh, each week, yeah, we meet here to answer the questions or review the questions uh, asked and answered on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have um, the legendary Mr. Tim Kappa. Uh, Tim, <laughs> Tim is based in Corby, about 100 miles uh, north of London. Uh, he uh, um, is a, uh, um, a, a Google product expert. Uh, is that is that what they what they prefer to say the these days, product expert? Yeah, product expert is the latest. Okay. And um, you can find Tim at uh, onlineownership.com. Masataki Wasa is webmaster of um, wasaweb.net. Uh, he's also a Google product expert on the uh, Google AdSense uh, community. You can find Masataki at webmaster at whatsaweb.net um okay uh let's try and start well i think we've got about 12 questions um Miranda Young asks the question, it's titled, does adding an XML sitemap to Bing help ranking? Um, no, it won't directly help you with ranking, but it will help you get your site indexed properly by Bing. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. And, and, and that will do us, won't it? There, there, there's not much more to say about that one. All right, our next one is from Juan Delasay Jr. It's titled H1 Tag Confusion. Um, Juan goes on to say, Semrush says the title and H1 tags uh, shouldn't be similar or the same. But Neil Patel says they can be. So uh, who is correct? Uh, is search rank affected if they are the same, slightly different or totally different? Well, <laughs> they can be the same and you're just listening to a, you know, you just, you, you know, you're just listening to, to a tool and another tool. <laughs> um, <laughs> but look, let's face it, your title, okay, so nine times out of 10, your title is what, depending on what CMS you're using, the title is actually what you've created that page in your CMS. So that becomes your H1 tag. So let's call it pink fluffy elephants, right? Um, but your uh so that's your h1 now your title is what is seen in search results and is what is that what people are going to you know sort of click through are they going to see pink fluffy elephants and then your brand name um which could be fluffy elephant mania okay now with your title, it may, um, you know, it may help to attract new customers. You need to think of click throughs, like it may help to attract customers to have your title as pink fluffy elephants hyphen, um, uh, you know, new stock available or um, uh, range, range of sizes and fluffiness available um you know that is what people are going to be sort of attracted to um from the search results now on the flip side you also need to do a little bit of some playing around because i don't know if you've realized but we've had a title getting 
as Eamon says recently, where Google seems to be randomly creating titles. So um, they are pulling different things from pages. Um, I mean, we've seen them pulling H1s. Uh, we saw the other day that they were actually pulling um, the logo off a page and calling the title logo hyphen and the, the company's name. Um, so yeah, they've been pulling some crazy stuff. So it actually may not even make a jar difference now if you, if you, if they, you know, but look, it doesn't matter if they're the same. It's only a tool telling you this. Ultimately, I think what the tool is trying to tell you is that your title should be slightly more descriptive and inviting to a user from search results. Not that they should not be the same. It doesn't matter if they're the same. If they're the same, because you have a 500,000 um, uh, product site, you know, you literally, you know, unless you're very clever. Um, but the, 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 the point being here is, you know, I think that what they're trying to say to you is that it's not from an SEO point of view, it's from a click through point of view. Thank you, Chair. All right, let's move on to the next. Um, this one is from Nicholas Johnson. Um, it's titled, Does It Matter? Does it, he says, does it matter for search engine optimization uh, if category page text is before the products or after products? Hmm. Okay, from an SEO point of view, I don't think it really matters where it is on page. Um, from a customer clicking through, it may be a little weird if they have to keep scrolling down. Um, what David says is probably nice to have a little serpent summary. And most, most e -com do that. There's a little snippet intro, and then you can click through for more product information. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, when you said um, David, you, you're meaning David Gassage, who uh, answered uh, yeah. that one. Also, um, yeah, look, it doesn't matter. Um, I've got a site where they couldn't do the, you know, the CMS, there was limitations and the developers, I suppose, are fairly limited. Um, so all of the actual description about that category is literally in the footer which is far from ideal um and there's a lot of stuff in those categories um so you're literally scrolling for like forever to get to the bottom um but from an seo point of view these guys obviously with other things involved um these guys are the top of the game in the uk um so from that sense of it no thanks thanks tim um all right let's 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 move on actually before i move on i must thank you yeah, people like david uh, gassage and uh, Amon johns and uh, michael martinez brenda malone um people who, who answer questions through the week and um all right let's pass to number question for what it's titled what's the ideal image file size um that's from anna maria switeker i'm sure mr taki would be able to tell me the right way to pronounce that um okay um, Anna Maria said, hi, I am optimizing my articles and wondering what's the ideal image file size. I have heard that it should be a JPEG format or JPG format 
and no more than 750 by 750 pixels and the size uh, below uh, 70 kilobytes is this true okay so <laughs> anna right so for example let's say the layout the template or whatever the, the design of the page has the featured image as a featured image at 1400 by six well then your 750 by 750 is going to be so pixelated it's ridiculous right your image size should be the display size of that image on the page and then you can optimize that display size like you like if you're if the display size of the product image for example is only 600 by 600 across the board putting a 750 in by 750 in is again ridiculous right do the image to the image size the display size on page yeah um richard and amon answered this question so if you scroll down you see um their answers and i agree with them it's one of those it depends cases i i would certainly say is it true no because you know, that seems an arbitrarily um drawn line saying okay it has to be this size and it has to be you know, this size that doesn't make sense uh, and to be honest i always wonder um how much of a difference it makes i mean image if you're talking about image file that is huge you know, a few megabytes then that's a problem but if it's a reasonably sized image um and if your visitors if your customers have access to decent internet connection and have decent devices then i don't think it really matters that much what matters in a sense is how quickly your server responds for instance if you're using cdn i think those things matter more than the actual size of the file thank you mr taggy all right let's roll on to number five on our run list from Hosnain Mukta. Uh, he said, I watched the video and now I'm confused. Uh, can anyone clear my confusion, please? He said, I watched a, a video in which they mentioned 70% traffic comes from link building. Then how uh, is uh, search uh, uh, the most important factor to target um if it has 30 percent part now i'm, I'm now I, i'm confused too thank you Hosna. um goodness I, I i think i must have um answered this um yeah this is so <laughs> uh, you see <laughs> yeah look i don't know what video you fucking watched excuse my language yeah. there goes their general exhibition sticker <laughs> okay i don't know i really don't know what video you watch mate okay but you know it it depends on what, what you know it depends on on the vertical the business you know some of them could have and it depends, it, it could be a complete mix. So 50% could come from search, okay, i.e. organic traffic. 30% uh, could come from direct traffic, people that know the site, that literally always do that. Now, like you think about this, like when you wanna buy something from Amazon, do you search for Amazon or go direct to Amazon, okay? And some of them could be direct brand search queries, right? So look, it, 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 what you've seen first off is rubbish. It's complete rubbish, what, whatever they're talking about. The other flip side is, yeah, sure, link building will help a page in search, but it all depends what kind of link building. Um, 
and you know uh, th there's multitudes of way to increase your your search presence but the ultimate being is search present right so the w whether you do a multinational like like if you think about it this way yeah like an advertising campaign done on telly with a really a really catchy advert, okay, for a business. Well, 99% most times result, result in uh, direct search queries or brand search queries, right? So that wasn't link building, and that could be what's driving $10 million worth of sales a year and without a single bit of link building. So automatically, your whole thing that you've watched is complete rubbish so just engage the brain a little bit you know and think about these things thank you tim okay um will we move on okay let's have a look at the next it's from andy aurora um it's titled how to see what they are capable of uh he gets them to say how to be sure about choosing someone to do um a, a search engine optimization project um for you um he said i mean how to see what people are capable of can somebody uh, um input please ask them Ask them. So if they are currently running work for a client, um, tell them that you're prepared to sign NDA and then have a call and you want to see their analytics. Ask them. Yeah. There's one, one thing, yeah, though, um, like... Uh, Oh, no, no, I won't say. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's um, move on to number seven on our run list. Um, Ruben Nunes asks, uh, he said, it's titled, only a small portion of my site uh, is indexed. He goes on to say, hi, guys, uh, I have a question about indexing. I recently created a site and I've submitted my sitemap. The problem is uh, Google Search Console is showing me that only a small portion of my site uh, is indexed. My most important content rich pages are not indexed at all. He said, I see it says uh, discovered currently uh, um not indexed um status excluded um, what is the process that i need to take to uh, hopefully uh, get my pages indexed so if they're not indexed um but says discovered not indexed i would firstly double just check uh that actual individual url just chuck it in search console on the url and check what it's what's going on um firstly it'll tell you if it's indexed or not or if it's on uh, on map uh, on, uh in search you can also do a site query on that actual url to see if it is um and that will give you a definitive answer but uh, if there's an issue with that url it will um when you do a check on that url in search console it'll tell you if there's an issue with it uh why it can't be indexed etc um okay did i did i pick you up there tim uh, I, did, I, I didn't mean to no 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 i just you know you could go on forever about it but yeah fair enough all right, let's um, move on to number eight on our run list. Um, Weronika Paracel, titled, I'm dealing with a headless WordPress uh, uh, content management system. Um, 
Weronica said, uh, hi guys, I'm dealing with a headless uh, WordPress CMS website right now. The front end is one domain and the back end is another domain. Is having two hosts, front end and, and, and this content management system, okay. How is Google going to treat this? Uh, I'm attaching a screenshot from a URL checking tool um, to make sure it's uh, clear. How should it, it ideally look like SEO wise in, in the case of a headless uh, content management system? And I see Michael Martinez uh, um, uh, succinctly uh, uh, says, it, says it all. Um, Yeah, only the front end should be visible um, to you know, to the public, as it were, including Google. Um, if you scroll down further, um, was it Todd um, made a good point that that you have to ensure that all the um, URLs are the front end domain, not the back end domain name. Yes. So, yeah, in the sense that this question shouldn't arise, right? Because it's only the front end that should be visible. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Taki. All right, let's go to number nine on our run list. Can Zila Ashraf uh, ask a question titled, uh, should I put my website URL on a Facebook post. Our old Facebook page uh, post of January 2020 is ranking in the top three uh, uh, for one of our keywords. Uh, should I put my website URL on that um, uh, Facebook post? Um, and I think this is not bad for S SEO if I do this, uh, is it? I'm confused. Well, so um, they have a post on Facebook which ranks well. And th that post, I assume, currently doesn't have a link to their website. So they can edit the post and insert a link. Uh, is that a good thing or not? I think that's the question. Um, if I haven't, if I understood it, um, SEO wise, it probably doesn't matter because I think all outgoing links from Facebook are marked as is it user generated or I don't know. Uh, but I don't think it really matters. Um, but if this post ranks well and if you can get people to come to your site via that post that's a good thing but it's not that's not necessarily an seo thing but it's a good way to um generate more traffic for sure yeah thank you mr taki all right will we go to the next one Okay, Utkash Sharma. Um, it, it, the question is titled uh, Google a PSI score for, for uh, mobile devices. Uh, Utkash says, hello everyone. Is it attainable to have 90 plus um, score on Google um, page speed index? I think that's what it means. Um, for uh, a WooCommerce based web shop. Um, one of my clients is very keen to increase the, the Google uh, PSI score for mobile devices above 90, to which I'm told it is tough to do because of uh, the several factors involved. She's now insisting on finding a, um, a person uh, on uh, Upwork and 
figuring a uh, how, how to do it. Apparently, there are a couple of chaps who are claiming 95%, uh, 95 plus uh, Google PSI score. Um, what are your thoughts? So, so my thought is, look, anything's possible, but it's heavily dependent on the site, what it's built in, uh, all sorts. Mm -hmm. Okay. So even if they could get a 95, 90 to 95, it's not going to do jack any for you anyway. Like, uh, so why, why is, like, what has your boss read that she make believe thinks that this is going to take her from page 10 to position one? It's never going to happen. Um, like, if she wants to spend the money, let her spend the money. That sounds fair. Yeah. Like, like, do you know what I mean? You can't, like, like, yeah, anything's possible. It all depends on the site. There's always another developer out there that may have uh, come up with um, a new way, a new little trick, a little piece of, you know, something that has worked well for them that will work well for the site. If it's going to benefit, like, if, if they can reduce it, um, fine. It's not an issue. But as long as she knows that spending that money is not necessary you know it may get you up to 95 but it's still not going to do anything like necessarily do anything for me from a 90 already to a 95 it won't turn the dial in any way shape or form yeah yeah and and um using i was supposed to say page speed insights isn't it um i mean those scores um can be useful, but you'd probably be better off looking at the real world scores that you get, um, for instance, from Core Web Vitals in your search console. The page speed insight numbers are often, um, what would be the right word, um, not theoretical, but um, it's indicative rather than actual real um, experience by the users. So I think I think one way to convince someone is to say, look, okay, this is a, it's a useful figure, but it's not the real life numbers. We have to look into how people are interacting with our, our site. And if we're seeing certain drop-offs at certain points. Those are the places that we need to look at. Fair enough. Thank you, Mr. Dougie. Right. Panzila Ashraf uh, has a question titled, Removing Indexed Pages from Google Search. Um, <clears throat> And Zilla said, please check this line of code. I added it in the HT access file to serve uh, a 410 HTTP error. Um, note, I'm doing this so that Google can remove uh, indexing of my old domain. Uh, and he then goes on to give some code, which is in uh, his HT access file. Let me see. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure um, what... <clears throat> He was trying to achieve it. Certainly, Michael Martinez said, uh, I don't understand why you're setting an environment variable if you want everything to return a 410 status code. Um, yeah, no, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand. Um, um, 
yeah, generally speaking, and I assume it's it's a factor, isn't it? Um, I think the recommendation is to use redirect rather than mod rewrite. And if you're uh, full turning the entire site, if you scroll down Michael, Michael Martinez, um, puts it elegantly, it's an e there's an easy easier way to do this rather than going through the um, rewrite on HD access. You can just redirect the entire site. But two weeks is not long enough. No, that's right. And also, um, um, he's, he, he doesn't uh, realize that Google never forgets. There's oh. no point, no, 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 no good trying to remove that that these pages because they're, they're, they may not be vis publicly visible, but they're certainly constantly available for uh, Google. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, Google still crawls for 10 pages um, years after I've deleted them. Yeah. And I've been responding with 410 for years. And okay, they're, still, they're still coming around every so many months to check if it's back again. It's gone. Hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Just call that a bit more than you know. Um, Sorry, I don't touch back in the job with you there, Mister. Oh no, no, I was just saying that um, if you scroll down a bit more, then um, you see uh, Michael giving the um, redirect um, rather than the um, rewrite as an option. Ah, yes, I see. Yes, when in doubt, Michael Martinez will tell us. Yes. Okay. Let's um, go to... This is number uh, 12 on our run list. It's um, from Rain Bomholt Peterson, um, who says, hi, SEO people. I have a backlink question. I sell furniture and accessories online. Uh, in my uh, Google search console, I see backlinks from uh, the following sites, uh, sites that do not exist or are totally uh, irrelevant. Um, should these links go to the disavow list? Um, and then uh, he's posted that list of domains. Um, yeah. Um, Really, um, no, look, go, go ahead, guys. What, what, what um, should Rain Bomhol Peterson do? Yeah, there's a lot there. Um, there's a lot there. Um, I would have a quick double check on the actual, you know, the actual link that's you know, coming from you, most cases, Google already knows this, they just disavow them. Uh, well, they don't disavow them, they just internally ignore them. Um, but if you're feeling uncomfortable with them, yeah, you can disavow them. Um, there seems to be quite a lot there, and I'm guessing you've never done any link building in any shape or form um, in the past. Um, so look, it's you know, um, I'm pretty certain Google's going to ignore those. If you feel really uncomfortable with them, you can just disavow. But double check them first. 
Yeah, and okay, this is just a hypothetical and something to bear in mind. If you if you have suddenly found quite a lot of weird backlinks to your site, just um, make sure that your site hasn't been compromised. Um, and you know, because what sometimes happens is that your site is compromised and it becomes a vehicle of um, spam links, if that makes sense. So, and then um, other compromised sites um, in the network will point to each other and so on and so forth. So, you know, if you if those links don't really make sense at all and you don't know where, uh, where, uh, where or why they um, come from and if they have appeared suddenly, I'll just check just for peace of your mind that your site is uh, not compromised. Thank you, Masataki. All right, let's have a look. I think this is, um, yes, it is. It's thank you for watching, Tom. We've done it again, guys. We've answered uh, the questions asked on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, we'll be back at the same time uh, next week uh, to uh, do this again. Um, all right, but before I uh, before I go, look, I, I must thank the people who answer questions uh, on the uh, uh, Facebook group. Um, as almost as soon as uh, they are asked, that they are answered. Um, and of course, you guys. So I, I must thank you uh, for your invaluable uh, contribution. Um, without Mr. Takiwasa and Tim Kappa, um, there wouldn't be uh, uh, a dumb SEO questions. Okay. Um, um, goodness. <laughs>